but there's another one. Father, we ask you to look after us all today and give us a fantastic day of fishing together and great fellowship on the beautiful James River. Forgive us my sins and bring us home safe and sound in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go. Day one, opening round of the Bassmasters Classic of 1989, and I'll tell you these 41 fishermen are ready. Because this is a big one, the World Championship of Professional Bass Angling, there'll only be one winner here on Saturday, the new world champion. But it's a tribute to every one of these anglers just to be here in the test of the best. I'm Ray Scott. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back from Richmond, Virginia. Don't you go away. The 1989 Bassmasters Classic, the test of the best, here on the historic James River near Richmond, Virginia. These anglers are the best, because to compete in the Bassmasters Classic, you don't just show up and go fishing. You earn the right to be here through one of three ways. Be the defending world champion like Missouri's Guido Hibden, or compete in the six qualifying BASS Invitationals and place in the top 35 at the end of the season, or finish first in one of the five BASS Federation divisions at the National Federation Tournament. This 1989 championship sports one of the strongest fields in classic history. 24 of these 41 anglers have won a BASS championship. This all-star field also includes 10 former world champions. Besides Guido Hibbon, there's 1974 classic champion Tommy Martin of Texas, who made a last-minute charge in this championship last year to almost pull it out. Well, the pattern I used last year, uh, and on particular in the last day, uh, when I really got onto the pattern of catching the bigger fish, I, I just changed lures, simply is all I did. I went to a small Cardell crankbait, chartreuse with an orange belly, in fact, the first pass I made down that bank that I'd been catching my fish on did not produce a strike until I changed to the little crankbait, and that was really the lure that the quality fish wanted the best. Uh, this year, I'm not sure if that pattern's going to work. I did go back in there yesterday morning, and I caught a three-pounder about the second cast and had another real good fish on a few minutes later, and boats started coming into the area, and I left the area immediately. I have a feeling that uh, that pattern could pattern? very well produce again for me this year. The former champion's list is strong. North Carolina's Hank Parker, the 1979 champion. Stanley Mitchell of Georgia, the winner in 1981. Louisiana's Jack Haynes, who claimed the 1975 title. All-time BASS money winner Larry Nixon of Arkansas, the 1983 classic champ, who prepares a bit differently for championship competition. I, I do a whole lot more preparation on small details like lure selection and hook sharpening and changing hooks and, and really getting ready for the classic than I do most tournaments. But as far as mental preparation, uh, I prepare for a regular BASS tournament just as I do the classic. They're all very important to me. And the who's who list continues. Three-time classic champion Rick Klon of Texas, fishing his 16th straight classic. The 1987 winner George Cochran of Arkansas. Oklahoma's Charlie Reed, the 1986 title holder. And Paul Elias of Mississippi, the 1982 classic champ. The top seed in this year's championship is Gary Klein of Texas, who outfished all BASS touring pros to win the coveted Angler of the Year award. And there are many others here who are also experienced classic competitors, like Roland Martin of Florida, who's fishing a record 17th classic. 
and former Angler of the Year Danny Brower of Missouri, who knows that attention to the James River's tides is important. Tides definitely influence the tournament. Uh, tidewater fish almost feed exclusively on certain tides, and if you're not in the right place at the right time, it's the difference between catching a limit and not getting any bites. So it can be critical, but there's really two ways of looking at it. You can go into an area that's got a lot of fish and try to utilize your time and just stay in that area and hope to catch some of the bigger fish even on the bad tides, or you can, you know, just run the right tides and hope to be on those right places at the right time. And that's a tough decision uh, because if you're off a few minutes, I'm, I know when I come over and pre-fished, I fished one spot, never had a bite, and come back by it about 45 minutes later and caught 15 pounds off it. Now, that's scary. I don't know. I'd rather fish a place where the water just kind of stayed at one level myself. And here's one angler the crowd has its eyes on. Hometown favorite Wu Daves from nearby Chester, Virginia. Wu placed second last year, just six ounces behind Guido Hibden. Another top contender to watch is Florida's Jim Bitter, who's come on strong following his $108,000 Megabucks victory. The 41 qualifiers arrived in Richmond Sunday. First on the agenda is registration where they pick up their official clothing, fishing licenses, and visit with the classic sponsors. 6.15, Monday morning, practice day, Osborne Landing, the new six-lane launch facility completed just in time for this year's classic. Each contestant is paired daily with an official observer from the National or International Press Corps covering this world championship. It's during the two-day practice period when these anglers attempt to put together a fish-catching pattern. These bass masters don't actually try to catch and land bass, but rather identify the areas and techniques it will take to put bass in the bag. The James is a tidal river and most of the competitors feel the tides will play a very important, if not deciding, role in the final outcome. But proper lure selection is also very important, as 1989 BASS Angler of the Year Gary Klein knows. Last year I had you know, real good success fishing a little five inch grub, uh, which I plan on really uh, keen on that again this year. But as far as a spinnerbait selection goes and a crankbait selection, I've downscaled everything to little eighths and quarter ounces. But basically, or the reasoning behind the little tiny baits is for the simple fact that there's a lot of small minnows in this river and the fish are real conditioned uh, to these little baits. Last year I threw the big bladed spinner baits and I think that that was a mistake. So this year I've gone to the little stuff. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back from Richmond, Virginia, the birthplace of the nation. Don't go away. Day one of the 1989 Bassmasters Classic Championship. The spectators crowd the launch area as the best bass anglers in the world start a three-day rod-to-rod battle for the coveted classic crown. Former champion Paul Elias returns to the barge pit off the James River where he fished last year, the same area where he caught 26 pounds, one ounce of bass to finish fourth, just one pound, seven ounces behind Guido Hibden. It's obvious the bass are still here, but the size of his fish will become an important factor. Gary Klein, coming off his best year ever on the BASS Tournament Trail, returns to the Chickahominy River, the area he fished last year when he finished 12th. On the other hand, Guido Hibden is in a different area from where he won last year. But there's no question this first day that the angler to watch is Wu Daves, the hometown favorite. But the fact is, no angler with a home lake or home river advantage has ever won a Bassmasters Classic. Well, it's showtime at the Richmond Coliseum. Classic 19. The first weigh-in will set the stage for the remainder of this competition as Florida's Jim Bitter takes the lead. 11 pounds, 14 ounces. I fished up here about 18 days in practice, I believe, and... Uh, I never could but one time duplicate a good catch uh, on successive days, so I know it takes three days to win this thing, and I'm not so sure I can do it, but I'm going to try. 
The Bassmasters Classic has become more than simply the world championship of professional bass angling. It's become an annual event that draws thousands of spectators to a week-long bass angling extravaganza. It's here at the Classic Outdoor Show where consumers see new products for the first time. Products so new, they have yet to reach the store shelves or showrooms. It's also during Classic Week when the outdoor press is introduced to new bass and innovation. So what you're seeing for the very first time and what the public is seeing for the first time and bringing used in the BASS tournament for the first time is the Ninja. The neat thing about the product... Company experts explain their products in detail to the Classic press members, answering questions with information which will find its way to consumers through radio, newspaper, and television. And there's field testing. This morning, you're going to have an opportunity to test drive the official truck of Bass for the Bassmaster Classic this year. This is an all-new truck, an all-new model of the full-size truck, extended cab, short wheelbase. And this morning, you're going to get that opportunity to test drive this vehicle in a wooded area and in a four-wheel drive environment. This vehicle, like all Chevrolet trucks, also has the uh, shift on the fly four-wheel drive. You don't have to get out. You just shift when you're going to go into four-wheel drive and shift out when you want to go to two-wheel drive which is also marked on the course, so you get a good demonstration of that. rising national interest in bass angling and this prestigious world championship would not be possible without the support of these classic sponsors. And it's this support too which has made it possible for the growing 2.7 million dollar BASS tournament trail. Day two and the conditions change drastically. Torrential rains accompanied by thunder and lightning hamper the fishermen but they're still catching bass. Many anglers at takeoff this morning were concerned the downpour would muddy the small creeks they're fishing. One area which would not be affected as much is the gravel pit fished by Paul Elias or the Chickahominy River, about an hour distant from the launch site. It's the area where Gary Klein, Rob Kilby, and David Wharton are fishing. While some anglers are catching bass, the weather hampers others and the top 10 changes quickly at this second day weigh-in. Wu Dave slips to fifth, and Arkansas angler Rob Kilby moves into second. But Florida's Jim Bitter retains his lead with this impressive catch, the largest of the day. Watch the scales, folks. 12 pounds and 15 ounces. And folks, he's five pounds ahead of the second man. It's going to be tough. All the guns going to be after you tomorrow, Jim Bitter. As <laughs> long as they don't come around me, I don't care. <laughs> You're the only guy I know that nobody even visited you yesterday. No, I didn't have too much company today. There was a couple more boats in there, but basically uh, I've got the area pretty much to myself. It was slow for me this morning. I just about got rattled. Uh, I didn't catch a fish probably for about two hours. Uh, my first one happened to be one of the bigger ones. Um, right before I caught him, I almost decided to try another spot. But luckily they started biting better, and this afternoon they bit pretty well. I ended up uh, culling a couple fish, and I lost a couple, but they weren't big ones. So all in all, I had about the same kind of day today as I had yesterday. As long as these fish keep on biting like this, uh, well, I'm two-thirds of the way there. Tomorrow, if I do as well, I'll be all the way there. Stay tuned for the exciting last day action of Classic 19. The Bassmasters will be right back. 
With a commanding lead and only a five bass limit yet to be caught, Jim Bitter is in the catbird seat. But to these Bassmasters classic contenders, second is last. It'll be a long day for some. The final day of Classic 19. The last chance and the last ride to the boatyard where these pros finalize their plans. Still a chance that my fish might turn off down there. Since they've held there for two days, I got a feeling that maybe they'll hold there for three, too. Um, we just have to go with the punches and hope things turn out all right. I think I'm fishing for second place. I think it's going to be hard to catch them better. But there's always a possibility, you know, it's about five or six or seven of us right there that within a pound of each other. And uh, I'll just battle them and hope to come out on the top of that battle and hope that Jim Butters, you know, would have, I mean, I don't want to wish him bad luck today or anything because he's a friend. And, but he could, if he does falter and say he only catches six pounds, seven pounds, and I could go ahead and catch a 15-pound stringer, you know, I could have a chance to catch him. I can win if I catch a good string of fish and Jim messes up, but I'm going to have to, uh, uh, Jim's going to have to have some misfortune for me to win, and I'm going to have to have a big fish even to win if he does mess up. So I'm going to change my strategy a little bit. I'm going to go and fish the best I can and try and catch a big fish by making a move. I got one little area that has the potential to produce a couple of good fish, and I hadn't been there yet, so that's kind of what I'm going to do this morning. While it's a tribute to an angler's ability to finish high in the Bassmasters Classic, only first place really counts because there's only one world champion. The $50,000 first place check is really secondary because with the fame of the title comes the fortune. It's estimated the classic champion will receive more than $1 million over a period of time as the result of endorsements and advertising. The front runners are catching bass this last day. It's going to be interesting. Although Jim Bitter enjoys a comfortable lead of nearly five pounds, several anglers could bust it open if Bitter should stumble, and another challenger gets on big bass. Rob Kilby is catching bass, as is Wu Daves. But so is the leader, Jim Bitter. This is a game of ounces worth $50,000. There have been several BASS competitions where a single ounce determined the winner, or a lost fish decided an outcome. The final curtain and the crowds come early, as early as 6.30 a.m. to assure a seat for the 2 p.m. weigh-in. It's now 11.30 a.m. in front of the Richmond Coliseum, two and a half hours before the final countdown. And these fans are here for a reason. It's like a World Series, the Super Bowl, and um, all the championships put together for me as far as fishing goes. It's close to my home, probably the only chance I ever have to see a Bassmaster Classic. So I come up here to see it, and that's what I mean to do is get inside and see it. And that's why I'm standing here two hours early. It's uh, almost like butterflies in your stomach, especially as you root for your favorite fisherman. Which is? Hank Parker. It's showtime at the 1989 Bassmasters Classic in Richmond, Virginia. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Hello, Ray, and all my fellow Bass members. It's a pleasure to join you for this year's weigh-in at the Bassmasters Classic. After three days of casting and dragging spinners and spoons through the water, I'm sure there's a lot of tension out there. But for those of you who don't win, just remember, there's always next year, and there's always that one that got away. For most of us, the real joy of fishing is not winning tournaments, but spending time with family and friends out on the water. And I agree with Isaac Walton that the time spent fishing should not be counted against one's time here on Earth. And it's with a rod and reel that I tend to count my blessings, especially if I'm out there with one of our grandkids or with Barbara, the only woman on earth who can read and fish at the same time while catching every word and every fish. But I also want to commend every member of Bassmasters for your concern and conservation of the environment. We all know that the health of our sport lies in preserving clean rivers and streams. And thanks to your efforts, we will maintain this wonderful sport for future generations. 
1984, I attended the weigh-in at Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And I want to thank you for including me in this year's weigh-in. Keep on fishing. Keep on looking after our precious environment. And thank you. God bless you all. And best of luck to all the contenders. <laughs> Direct a building tall enough to almost touch a star. Ladies and gentlemen, Ray Scott! Don't go away, because this is where it's going to happen. We'll be right back with the exciting conclusion of Classic 19. Mr. Paul Elias. All right. Three pounds. I would say it's uh, going to push it. It's going to be probably two and a half, between two and a half and three pounds, to say the least. Six pounds and nine ounces could take the lead. Paul Elias, you remember the governor? I'll see you again. Wait for Paul Elias. Seven pounds, 14 ounces. Seven, 14. New leader. you <laughs> taking the lead. I took the lead. Does that mean I won? Oh, you didn't win. All right, our next friend, defending champion of the Bassmasters Classic, a nice standing ovation for Guido Hibden. You're kind of standing a little bit taller than you were yesterday, Guido. My brain finally started working. <laughs> what in the Lord's name? You told me this morning, I, I knew you were going for the big bass, but tell me what you did to catch that big, big fish. Well, I went into my little creek that I ended up on last year. First thing yesterday, and it was dirtied up. And I had another little creek where I ended up catching the big fish last year out of. And because this one was muddied up, I didn't go to it. So uh, this morning I made a decision. You know, it, it done me good last year, so I thought I'd go back. Same area? Same place. Let's weigh the bass, then we'll talk some more. All right, here we go. The limit of bass for Guido Hibden. 13 pounds, 14 ounces. Boom. Guido, I got to tell you that it ain't over yet, but right now, Guido Hibden, you are number one in the hearts of many people here, and you're also number one in our tournament with 27 pounds, 13 ounces. How about that, B-Team? How about that, A-Team? He needs nine pounds to take the lead. He's got to have nine pounds to take the lead. Wu Day has missed the classic last year by six ounces. Wu, Wu, Wu. He needs weight. That's three. All right, going for more. Come on, Lou. Where you are, Lou? We need one. 
Mango Bass Rube at three pounds. Come on. Rube, I believe you needed one more bass. You needed that limit. Well, uh, I had a couple bites today and let them get away and uh, had a good day on the water. More than anything, I've had some exciting times in my life. My wife, my kids, and uh, last year at the Classic. But this is... <laughs> The most important thing is Jesus Christ, my Savior. <laughs> Next, most important thing is everybody sitting in this building. I'd like to shake every one of you's hand if there's any way possible before you left here. I love you. God bless you, Ruth. Angler from Royal Arkansas, Rob Kilby. He was second place yesterday. Second place yesterday with 19 pounds, 15 ounces. Rob Kilby. He has a chance. He needs seven pounds, 15 ounces to take the lead. All right, that's good. Now we're, now we're talking three bass. What's he got? 715. You got to have 715 to take the lead. Hey, this could be close. It could be he needs seven pounds, fifteen ounces. If he goes out to another fish, he can make it. He's going out to if this fish go if this fish goes two pounds about that, he's gonna take the lead. I got a feeling. All right. Is that five? That's five. He's got his limit, and this may be it. 715. He's got to have. He'll take the lead if he has it. If he doesn't, he falls to second or below. Rob, it's going to be awful close. You've got to have 715 to take the lead. Watch it carefully now. 10 pounds, 11 ounces, the new leader. The Bassmasters will return in just a moment for the finale of Classic 19. Folks, the next man coming in, and, and, and he's a danger. He's, a, he's subject to be like a rattlesnake. He can strike any time. From Denver, North Carolina, Hank Parker. Parker, eighth place with 16 pounds and 14 ounces. He needs 13 pounds and 13 ounces to take the lead. Hank Parker is a type fisherman who can do it. He has proven himself over the years on the classic trail. His wife Angie is supporting him. He's 36 years old. Tremendous sport. He's fishing in his 12th consecutive Bassmasters Classic. He won the 1989 Missouri Invitational Tournament. He won the 1985 Super Bass Tournament. He was Angler of the Year in 1983. He has won four national titles. He is a come from behind fisherman, to say the least. He ranks fifth in all time money winnings with more than $300,000 to his credit. Incredible fisherman. He's got to have big time fish today to take the lead or to get up into big money. 
Now, hold him up nice and slow, Hank Parker. He's got to have a limited bass. He's got to have a limited bass. Look out now. Look out now. Eighth place yesterday. A long way to go. Another superb bass. Close to two pounds. He needs 13 pounds, 13 ounces to take the lead. Otherwise, he's second. Don't do it slow. I know how a man feels on death row. I've been sitting out there for about 30 minutes. I'm about to have a heart attack. Put him on the scale, do we? Hold on just a minute. Just, we're not gonna do it. just a second. Come on, put him on the scale. I just got to ask you one question. Do you realize that 13 pounds will put you in the lead? Put him on the scale. Let's see what I got. <laughs> All right, put him on the scale. taken the lead, you can notice that you're 31 pounds and 6 ounces. You moved ahead of Rob Kilby, who has 30 pounds and 10 ounces. I cannot remember in many years anyone coming from as far down in the ranks, 8th place, to take the lead in the Bassmasters Classic. Never. I don't remember. We have another man, at least one man. Do we have one more to come in? One more man. I believe that's Jim Bitter, our leader. And Jim Bitter has got to have six pounds and ten ounces to take the lead away from you, Hank Parker. It's going to be close. I've talked to Jim. It's going to be, it's going to be within an ounce. It's going to be close. You've already talked with Jim Bitter? It's going to be within an ounce. Governor? Getting too close for me. How about you coming, Governor Bales? Come on here. Come on in here now. I don't want this thing to blow up on me. I want two wives in the ready position. Bring the both wives down here and keep them down here. The two we got two ladies that can win this thing. Hank Parker, meet the governor. How are you? How you doing? Governor Belial, do you remember him from last year? Sure governor, it's uh, we've got one gentleman coming in, and that is our leader from yesterday. And I understand from Hank Parker that he visited with him out in the in the uh, waiting area, and they have compared notes, and it appears to be announced one way or the other. Bring them on. All right. Let's bring them on. Let's go. Jim Bitter, our former leader. You can stand right down here. Yeah. All right. Thank you. This is going to be anybody's show. Let's have a nice hand for our leader, Jim Bitter. <laughs> Fruitland Park, Florida. Our leader for the first two days, Jim Bitter, with 24 pounds and 13 ounces. Tremendous man, 46 years old, his beautiful wife, Rita, right here with all the ladies and ready to take the check home. Who knows who will win it? It's $50,000 for the first prize, $10,000, $12,000 for second place. He's fishing his first Bassmasters Classic. Tremendous fisherman and a tremendous gentleman. He won $108,000 in our tournament, in the Megabucks tournament this year. What's he got to have to take the lead away from Hank Parker? Six pounds and nine ounces. Now hold him up slow. That fish is going to weigh a pound. 
in seven ounces, maybe pound nine ounces. Add it up in your head. That fish is going to go pound and 15 ounces. Fourteen ounces, maybe fifteen ounces. He's got to have six pounds and ten ounces, and that's it. This is going to be tough. Jim, Bitt Jim, Bitt I'd like to meet the governor. Jerry nice to meet you, Jerry. Welcome, Welcome to Virginia. Ray. Jim, I don't ever remember in history, Hank Parker has been more nervous than he was today, and I know how you feel at this moment. I've never seen a man come from so far, but you've had, a, unfortunately, a poor day, and I will talk about it in a minute. But we must weigh these fish. A drop of water right there. We can let the governor make the call. Now, let's remember, folks, he's got to have six pounds. What is it? 6-10 to win. 6-10 to, to win. All right. Watch it. For the Bassmasters Classic 1989. Six pounds, seven ounces. Six, seven. The highest honor in sport fishing today by Hank Parker. The second time ever to win the Bassmasters Classic. A great sportsman and never, never quit man. Well, I lost one fish this morning, but I got a couple of fish right off the bat, and I got that big fish. And I started thinking about all these people and how they screamed for Guido Hibden last year. And about 1.30 this afternoon, I caught another good fish, and I figured that gave me pretty close to 14 pounds. And then I thought, you know, I really got a shot at this thing if I can get one more big fish. And I had one fish. I've lost him yesterday on a spinnerbait. He weighed about three and a half pounds. I lost him this morning on a worm, and I went back this afternoon, and I lost him on a crankbait. <laughs> So I figured I lost the Bassmaster Classic in that one fish, but I'm thankful to the Lord that I was able to hold on with what I had, and I've never been as excited in my life. Stay tuned as the Bassmasters take you out on the water with the new world champion. Hank Parker will show you where and how he caught his winning string. The Bassmasters will be right back. I had a couple of places that I felt like had the potential to produce uh, a winning string, but I thought about it and, and I said, well, the thing that I need to do is go out and overtake second. I felt like if I could overtake second with a 13-pound plus stringer, which was a, was a pretty good agenda, uh, that I'd have a shot, you know, and uh, uh, that, that was my strategy. Hank, you know, we've been talking all week about how important these tides are, and, you know, I'm sure they are, but probably they become less important uh, when you commit yourself to an area like you have, but have you found that it still makes a difference in your approach? The tide does play a very important part, and to me, maybe more psychological. Uh, I, I tend to think it affects the fish, but it, you know, it may be a mental thing, I don't know, but I'd make adaptions on, on a different tide, and it seemed to pay off. What would you do? 
Well, uh, it seemed like the last three hours of, of outgoing, the fish were really tied up against the cypress knees and the little uh, uh, cypress roots in the bends of the creek, and I'd fish really, really tight. And then as the tide got out, the last hour, the fish were on the outside of the laydown logs. They were out away from the bank. And then, ironically, usually when the tide rises, they go right back right. to where they were. They didn't. They stayed out there on the end, and that's where I was missing them. Tommy Martin told me uh, yesterday morning in the boatyard going out, he said, uh, you may want to try fishing a little deeper on a rising tide, even though I know that doesn't make sense, but that seems to be what's happening. And uh, Tommy's always been honest with me, and, and I tried it, and it worked. He was right, and it helped me. Hank, did you catch most of your fish in the tournament on that spinnerbait? Well, I changed it a little bit, Chuck. Uh, I'm using a three-quarter ounce bait, uh, which I intended to do when I got here. Uh, but I used like a number five Indiana the first day, and this is a number seven Indiana. So I changed and went to a bigger blade when I found that the fish uh, wanted the bait up on top. Yeah, waking, waking ability. Right. And even I had been changing. When I'd wake, I'd use the big blade, and then when I would fish it slow, I'd use a smaller blade. But I knew I needed those big bites, so I changed and put number seven blades on all the baits. Uh, I felt like it was uh, a better chance to catch a bigger fish on a bigger bait. Now that's a good little spot right there where you got that overhanging bush and those little cypress roots there. And the way you wanted to work that bait was just exactly like that. Keep that bait on the surface. And I would make one cast like that and keeping the bait, waking the bait. And then I'd make the second cast and I would slow roll it. I never did catch a fish at an intermediate speed. I'd either catch that fish slow rolling that bait down around the roots or either waking it up on the surface. And this is the little stretch that I got to. I fished it. It looks so good. It's got everything to offer that you would want in the creek, but I never caught a fish here on a spinnerbait. And this is the stretch, the next two or 300 yards here, where I started flipping. Like right in here is where that shoreline, it just goes, you know, it's almost straight down. And it's difficult to get those fish for some reason. I mean, you know, it doesn't look that much different. But I guess a foot or a foot and a half of water depth made all the difference in the world. I never caught a fish on a spinnerbait, and uh, I caught a fish exactly right there yesterday. I caught about a two and three quarter pounder. You might say it was the one that got you the world championship. <laughs> the, the, all five of them uh, got me the world championship. With two ounces is all I had to spare. I needed every one of them. The 19th annual Bassmasters Classic has been brought to you by Chevy Trucks. The heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. Delco Voyager Marine Batteries, deep cycling, maintenance-free. Sears, your money's worth and a whole lot more. Polaroid, new 35mm one film for beautiful pictures, the choice is easy. Wrangler, the most comfortable jeans known to man. Ranger boats, we still build them one at a time. Humminbird. Absolutely brilliant technology. DuPont Power Lines, Stren Prime Plus, and new Magna Pin and Magnum 1440. Johnson Outboards. Wouldn't it be nice if everything else were as dependable as your Johnson Outboard? Zebco Motor Guide. The choice of serious fishermen. Pradco. Makers of quality products for fishermen throughout the world. Bomber, Rebel, Hedden, and Cordell. Man's Bait Company, made in America, quality guarantee. Evinrude Outboards, Evinrude owners are born, not made. The Virginia Department of Tourism, Virginia is for lovers. And the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, the world's largest bass fishing organization. America is a sharecropper son who plays a guitar and grows up to be a rock and roll star. Yes, even a sharecropper son can go far in America. America is an immigrant's daughter with something to say, who grows up to be a writer one day. An immigrant's daughter can turn out okay in America. America, you can build a bigger bridge, you can make a better car, 
erect a building tall enough to almost touch a star. Anything you can dream, you can do. It's up to you. America is a telephone man on top of a pole. The miner who digs deep down in a hole. And each one in search of his own private goal. In America, America is the cop on the beat who walks all alone and offers his life to safeguard your own. Like so many heroes unsung and unknown in America, America, you can build a stronger dam, you can make